It is a huge honor today to be podcast interviewing Dr. David Fantarella. That name has to be 100% Italian. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. And I love your, uh, I love your hairdo, man. That's a uh, rockin' hot hairdo you got there. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's easy to keep up with. You know, no, no, no hat head here. <laughs> Dr. David Fantarella has been in practice as a general dentist in Hamden and North Haven, Connecticut, for more than 15 years. His general dentistry practice has an emphasis on implant, cosmetic, and laser dentistry. Dr. Fantarella received his Bachelor of Arts degree in physics, damn, from Dartmouth College. He received his degree as a doctor of dental medicine from the University of Connecticut School of Den Dental Medicine. He completed his residency training at the University of Connecticut Medical Center in Farmington, Connecticut. His awards include the American Association Award for Excellence in Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery, the National Society of Dental Practitioners Award in Law and Ethics and Dentistry, and the American Academic Periodontology Award for Outstanding Achievements in Periodontics. Dude, that is amazing. Thank you so much for being on my show. How are you doing today? We're doing great. We're doing great. Uh, we're finally getting some summer weather here in the Northeast, which is nice. So what, uh, what advice do you have uh, for general dentists? You know, a lot, a lot of people are whining that, um, you know, now 82% of the dentists take PPOs. Uh, they feel like they got to compete, uh, take these PPOs. They're competing against corporate dentistry. And, um, you know, the old saying, there's always room at the top. Uh, what, 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 do you, what do you say to dentists who are trying to get fired up or get their practice going? Or what advice would you have for them? I, I would keep it simple. Three things. Do what you love. Integrate technology and change the experience. Right there. Damn, you, that's if, profound. Do what you love. Yeah, so it's very simple. You got to do what you love, right? So how I got, I, I just started, started with all this is, I just love technology. So uh, if I call a spade a spade, the one thing I probably do well is I integrate technology well. I don't, if it doesn't work the first day, I'll figure it out. And, and even if it's not 100% of what the company tells me it's going to do, I, I'm, I'm able to leverage it and, and get something out of it. And when I do that, I always look at it in terms of, well, how's that making my staff day better? How's that making my patients day better? And when, when that happens and you start to integrate it, you develop efficiencies. And when you de develop the efficiencies, the patients notice and they come. If you build it, they will come. And do you, do you think, uh, do you think, do you think that uh, you can do that on a PPO fee schedule too? Um, absolutely. On my bucket list is in Connecticut, we have something called Husky. So that's our kind of our state insurance for the underserved. And, um, I'm, I, you know, I've worked the numbers where I think that if I, if I leverage the technology that I own, which is about anything that's worth anything in dentistry, um, I can do it more efficiently and treat the patients with a better experience and decrease the cost of care. That is profound. I mean, they say the three rules of business, you know, uh, make it faster, better, and cheaper. And so you think this technology is driving down your cost so you can do dentistry faster and cheaper enough to be a provider of Husky? So that I know, I don't think it, I know it, because that's something we analyze weekly in our management meetings, just because we have to. Um, but in terms of a kind of a, a you know, a, a managed care, I, I'm a firm believer that we can do that in managed care, because the variable there is, can we bring in young, younger docs who are willing to do that dentistry, maybe for a little less pay, and get them to buy into the technology and learn how to do it? How do they, how do they bring someone in and, and save a tooth that, you know, historically, when I went to dental school at UConn, would have been, you know, root canal, post and core, crown and crown length, in which today is an extraction and an implant. And how do we have that patient uh, leave within an hour and a half with the new crown, the crown lengthening, everything all said and done for the cost of a crown? How do we make that happen? Let, let's go through. The, I, I love what you said. Do what you love. Integrate technology. And what was the third one? Change the patient experience. Change the patient experience. And, Look, you know, I, I probably should say just change the experience in general. Change it for your staff and change it for the patient. The reason why it's important to change it for your staff is because in order to do this, you have to have a top-notch staff. And I've known that. I practiced almost 20 years. So I knew that 18 of the years, but it took me 18 of them to figure out how to get that staff. And the way I get that staff is I give them an experience that they can't get anywhere else. And it's not about money. Everybody thinks you just have to pay everybody more money. And they do, you know, they need, you need to be in competitive rates, obviously, but you need to give them an environment in which they feel that they have a voice and the environment prospers them to have the, the experience for both the patient and the staff um, important to them.
And that's, and that's something we, we figured out how to do. That is amazing. So let's go through those three things with you. Do what you love. What do you love? Um, I love, so I've never filled out a resume in my life. So I knew that I wanted to, to own my own business and practice for myself. All right. So it was orthopedic surgery, designing cars, or dentistry. Um, orthopedic surgery, New Haven, Connecticut, that, that's not an option to do that for yourself right now. I mean, Yale and the other large hospitals are kind of just managing everything right now. So that's off the table. Cars, um, you know, again, I would have to go and work for someone else, where dentistry allowed me the autonomy, the business sense, but it's got enough health care in it that people can't ignore it. So it was kind of a perfect, a perfect choice for me. I'm not going to tell you I knew that 20 years ago, but I've just worked my way in it. So I do what I love every day, and I claim, and I really feel that in, in these four walls, I can almost fix, fix anything, which, which I like. So that's number one. Number two is I do it with technology. I love just taking the latest and greatest integrating it and changing that experience. It's, it just makes it fun, it changes it, and it makes us more efficient, and ultimately we make, make uh, the, the cost of goods less and our paychecks bigger. Well, go, go through all your technology. What, what technology have you bought and integrated into your uh, dental office? Uh, you know, all the biggies, so CAD CAM, cone beam, lasers, right, so both hard and soft tissue lasers, uh, valve scope, care view, um, latest imaging with, you know, whatever sensor is, is the hottest. Um, in terms of management software, we, we try and integrate every aspect of the management software from communication to reports to, um, so the trouble with, uh, you know, management software is you, you, you put crap in, you get crap out. So you have to make sure that you go through and your treatment plans are all accurate and that you're staying on top of where the pre-estimates are you're informing the patients what those pre-estimates are, where the patients are in the cycle in their treatment. Have they started, um, have they bought into the treatment plan? Or maybe you've presented it because you have to, it's periodontal disease, but maybe they've rejected it. So if you rejected that treatment plan, is it staying on the books? Are, are you reviewing that uh, with your staff weekly to let everybody know? Um, and that's not, ba uh, you know, pestering your patients about what's there, but just informing them, making dentistry accessible. That is the key. Name brands. What management softwares are you talking about? Um, so early on in my career, I had I developed a relationship with Shine. So I'm basically a Shine Shine uh, guy through and through. We we I, I bought um, I bought pretty much everything from them. Primarily because when you have high end uh, technology, you have to have support. You know, we just have we have. Uh, we just purchased our second mill in, in uh, plan scan E4D I started out with, and we have it fully integrated. So we've, we tend to push the envelope. We don't scan from a cart. We don't scan from a laptop. We actually scan from the computers in the operatories, and we have that integrated into our network. And yesterday was just a, a time where we were having an issue with a mill, and we needed support immediately because we use it so much throughout the day. Um, and, and Henry Schein's been there for me. That doesn't mean... Ben Co. can't do it for you, but if you look at what I have, so I have a Gendex DP700, that's the cone beam I have, two, two E4Ds or plan scans. Gendex what? DP700. DP700. Right, so that's their 2D and 3D um, imaging. So we can do bite wings, we can do pan, we can do uh, 8 by 8 inch cone beam. Uh, you know, we can do it in a decrease or increase the voxelation so that we are um, paying attention to the radiation that we're, we're, uh, we're imposing on the patient. Let, let's go back to your, your CAD CAM decision. How long have you been with E4D? Been with E4D since 2009. Oh, and it and recently... Think, Howard, let me just make one point about that. I mean, I really wasn't ready to buy it then, but that was, that was a pure business decision because it was either... Pay the government fifty grand or get back ten, and I think too few dentists know about Section One Seventy Nine, and I think we need to shout that from the rooftops and say, "Listen, you know, do you want the government spending your money, or would you rather save your money, put it into your business, and make everything better for your patients, your staff, and yourself?" Um, you know, you know, Section One Seventy Nine just lets you depreciate it all in one year, and I was either going to have to, you know pay the government or, 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 you know, 50 grand or get back 10 in that year. Plus, then there's section 199 because you become a manufacturing company where every unit you make, you can write off. So those, that's how I got started, you know, it just made sense. And then the dentistry made sense, you know, the margins were better. It, it, it brought everything in-house. And we've gone from just 
Shoot, when I, when I started with CAD CAM, I was prepping, impression, and inserting on three different visits. I really didn't buy it for the fact that it's single-day dentistry, but now patients love it so much. It's, you know, two to four units a day, and now we're doing, you know, now we're placing implants, scanning, milling, custom staining, and inserting in the same day with CAD CAM. So let's go back. You said Section 179 that says you can buy something for fifty thousand up to $50,000, you said? Uh, whatever. So right now it's five hundred thousand. That just means that you can accelerate the depreciation on large ticket items in your office for one so, year. What's that? You accelerate. Just write it off that year. Write it off that year. Up to five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Yeah. And is just, that one seventy nine? Is that just for dentists or? It's not. It's uh. It's not just for dentists. Nope. Nope. It's a federal. It's a federal tax code that not enough dentists know about. So that you know they. You need to take advantage of those things. Listen, as a small business owner, we do a lot of we do a lot of paperwork for the government. We do a lot of their we do a lot of their work. So when they give us something like that that's legitimate, you have to take advantage of it and use it to accelerate your practice and and and, and, and increase your experience, better your experience as a dentist. And then you said uh, section one ninety nine, also one seventy nine was the first one. One ninety nine was the second one. One one ninety nine is what allows you. Um, so, so that's specific to CAD CAM. That makes you when you when you're a CAD CAM dentist and you're manufacturing not not scanning and sending it to a lab, but you're manufacturing those units in house. Every unit you put a value to it, like it, you know, two hundred dollars, say, okay, for the crown, and you sum up all that what what it costs you to do that, and then you can. It's it's kind of it's a it's a equation that a accountant has to work out for you, but it, it saves you about another ten fifteen thousand dollars a year in taxes. Depending nice. on how you do. The you know, the uh, tax code, if it was simple, it wouldn't be fair. And if it's fair, it's definitely not simple. It's, a, it's, it's hard to figure out. Um, why so did, why did like, you... Like Shine and whatnot, they'll, they'll work you through those things. This is not something that I invented. This is just something that they tell you about and you have to take advantage of. And I do a lot of lecturing for lasers. And, and unfortunately, there's not a lot of doctors that know about it. So um, why did... Um, why did you go with the, the E4D instead of uh, um, owned by Plan Mecca as opposed to uh, CIRAC owned by uh, Densewise Serono? How how that decision work? Yeah, my only, you know, listen, I like to call a spade a spade. My problem with Serono is they're a durable goods company. So when they go ahead and they upgrade that, right, they just hit you. You could buy it today and then next month they upgrade it and they'll hit you up for another 60 grand because that's where they're making their money. Whereas E4D, where originally it was E4D, Henry Schein, 3M and Ivaclar, they were partners. So they get a lot of their profit from the, um, the um, disposable goods, the blocks and whatnot. And that helps so that when they do an upgrade, they make the upgrade very accessible. So one of my mills and, and scanning units I have, I bought in 2009 for $140,000, right? I upgraded it two years ago for 18000 and I have the latest and greatest now. So that's pretty good. I didn't have to spend another hundred grand. What was the name of that guy who started E4D in Dallas? Uh, oh, his well, wife's name was... Two South African twins who had the idea, and then it was a businessman, and I'm trying to think of his name, and I can't... He's not... I don't think he's involved in it anymore. That was the right. big his wife. His wife was Dottie? Was his wife Dottie? Hopefully it'll come to me while we're talking here. I don't yeah, think. what an amazing man, and, a, and an athlete, and an Ironman, and a marathon runner, and just... Oh, yeah. Driven, driven. Yeah. So, so did you? Um, so, when they sold that to Plan Meckett, is Shine, Ivaclar, and 3M still partners, or? Yeah, 3M's out. I think Ivaclar's in, Plan Mecca's in, and I don't know all the deal, but you know, they plain, they changed all the badging to Plan Mecca because they really wanted the Romexis software. I think that Romexis software really puts us more on a level playing field with with uh, Serac. See. The best thing that happened to CERAC and us is really E4D because it created a competition. CAD CAM's been around for a long time, but it hasn't been competitive. Now you, now it's, it's leapfrog, right? Every year, ours is better, yours is better, ours is better. That's great for you and I, right, Howard? Because that's going to come into the market and that's going to make things more, it's going to make it better. What, what, what was the Romexis software you're talking about? Yeah, Romexis is kind of the software that the scanning system kind of sits on. So, for instance, uh, if I wanted to do... Um, a, a, a zirconia, and I didn't want to center that in my office and whatnot. I can just do the scan, get everything all designed, which I like to do because I've come, you know, I'm kind of a control freak about it now. Now that I keep everything in house, and then I can just send that to an SDL file, email, it, and boom, it's getting made that day. 
You know, I've been to uh, Plan Mecca, uh, Dottie and her, her husband, and that's an amazing company. But I've been to Helsinki, Finland, and gone to uh, the Plan Mecca headquarters. That is a monster company. Oh, I yeah. mean, in Europe, that is just huge, beyond yeah. huge. Absolutely. So and when I when I saw them, uh, what when, when I saw them buy E4D, I thought that would absolutely be a game changer for E4D. I mean, to have a parent I, like that. I think the statistic right now is out of every seven units sold, I think E4D is only is only uh, one of those, you know. And, but the reality is, to any doc, I say they say to me, you know, sh which CAD CAM unit should I, should I get? Pick any one. Just do it. Jump, man. Jump. The, 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 the future of dentistry is digital and lasers. That's it. Either Can you hear that right there? That's the thunder coming, baby. That's what's happening. Is the what? CAD CAM and lasers? Thunder. That's, 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 that's digital and lasers. It's the future of dentistry. Digital not, and lasers? If you're not on that train, you're getting lost. Digital. Digital imaging, digital scanning. Uh, digital radiographs. You know, there's doctors I meet now that still don't have digital radiographs. I mean, what are you waiting for? Right. It's uh, that's amazing. So you you talk to Gary Severance much over at E4D? Uh, not so much. Not directly. No, no. I um. So I'm I'm in pretty close with the with the Shine uh, managers of Shine in the state. So I, there's just only so much time in the day. I, I do a lot with. Uh, with uh, Convergent Dental and, and, and uh, Solea, so I just don't have a ton of time for a lot else. So I demonstrate, in terms of CAD CAM, I demonstrate the technology for them. For Convergent, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm their you know, lead trainer and I have the most procedures in the world with uh, Solea. Yeah, well, let, well, let's go to that technology next. Convergent Laser uh, makes Solea. Um, they're out of what, Boston? Yes, Natick Mass. Natick Mass, so talk about that. So why, for, first of all, um, Back up a little bit on the lasers because there's all different kinds. T tell them uh, different kinds of lasers and, and why different wavelengths and why you went with uh, Solea. Okay, so so with lasers, it's 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 all about it's all about the wavelength. And the reason it's all about the wavelength is because it has to do with something called a chromophore. A chromophore is the molecule in the tissue that absorbs a specific wavelength. All right. So if you have a diode, for instance, and you were thinking about protecting your eye, you would worry about the retina because it's absorbed into pigmented tissue. Soleil, on the other hand, is absorbed into hydroxyapatite and water. So the part of your eye you're worried about is the cornea. So if you aim it at your eye, it's going to put a hole in your cornea. So it's all about wavelength because when it comes to the oral cavity, we want to ablate everything and we want to ablate everything as efficiently as we can, preferably with one wavelength. And that's what Soleil does very simply. But if you, if you look back historically, right, we have Soft tissue lasers like diodes and periolase that treats periodontal therapy, which is just soft tissue. And then we have hard tissue lasers. And historically, the only hard tissue lasers in dentistry were erbium lasers. And erbium lasers are drawn into water. So really, if a tooth were inside out, right, and dentin were on the outside, that's where the water is, erbium would be the right laser to ablate tooth structure. But it's not that way. The enamel's on the outside. It's an egg. So you've got to get through the enamel. And that's the beauty of Soleil, is it's absorbed directly into hydroxyapatite. And the second thing about Soleil is it's computer controlled. So all other lasers are either on, on or off. Soleil has a rheostatic foot pedal. So it's like driving a car or using the drill. You want to go deeper, you press harder. So it gives you the right wavelength and easeability and accessibility. It makes it easy and, and accessible to doctors. And what, and what is the, the wavelength? I mean, is, is it erbium? Is it... Um... Right. So, so, so now there's erbium, which is all the other hard tissue lasers, and there's modified CO2. The reason I say modified is native CO2, which in hospitals is 10.6 microns. That's highly absorbed into water. Soleil is 9.3 microns, modified CO2. It's kind of interesting how they do that. And that's absorbed into hydroxyapatite and water. So it's just Soleil. And you can't patent a wavelength, but they've patented how that wavelength is used. So it's the only one on the market. Okay, so what, I, what kids ask me the most, you know, pod podcast people are young. They're, they're mostly commuting to work. You said your associate listens to the podcast, right? Absolutely. Uh, on their commute. So th this is what, this show's gotten viral with a lot of under 30 with their hour commute to work. And their common quest is, um, David, I walked out of school with $350,000 student loans. I, um, I don't have the money 
to go buy a $100,000 laser, a $150,000 CAD CAM, a $100,000 CBCT, go to Dominican Republic and learn how to place implants. So it was specific to the laser. How was that a return on investment to them? How, okay. did, how, how does that make them money if they got student loan debt? Absolutely. So any piece of, any, so I talked to you a little bit about, you know, do what you love and integrate technology, change the experience. Well, the next thing you have to look at is anytime you buy anything, you have to look at return on investment. Absolutely. Right. ROI. Everything's about ROI. CAD, CAD CAM has a strong ROI. If you're doing 12 units of, of uh, a month on the 13th unit, you might as well light $200 on fire, right? Because that 12 units, that pays for your monthly, your monthly VIG on it. When you look at Solea, there's nothing, there's no better piece of technology that I've bought that has a stronger ROI than Solea. And basically the reason is, is it, it has three components, right? It saves you time and it saves you time because no anesthesia and no bleeding, basically. So it allows you to do more of, of what you're already doing. Secondly, it allows you to do those things that you're not doing because they're not easy to do. For instance, uh, a phrenectomy on a four or five year old or an adult for that matter or aesthetic gingivectomy after ortho. You know, historically that's uh, anesthetic, a scalpel, controlling be bleeding, nobody wants to do it. I can do it with Solea virtually without bleeding, without anesthetic, done, and it's a very billable procedure that's paid very well and patients love it. I just had a patient in yesterday where she, you know, she's a, she's six, six foot female, just beautiful, volleyball player, and she had very short teeth because of gingival hypertrophy. We almost, teeth are now one and a half times the size, recontoured, thinned it, loves it. It was done in, I don't know, not even 20 minutes without anesthetic, all right? So it allows you to do procedures you're not doing. And then the third thing is, as soon as you change that patient experience, you're going to experience at least double the new patients coming into your practice. So to those new docs, I say to them, you can't afford not to do it. That's the reality. You might, you might not see the way to get there, but you can't afford not to do it because if you're not competing like this, you're going to get left behind. Now, my doc with me, you know, we've done a... So I say kind of this is the house that Soleil built, right? So my, my model was two to four CAD CAM units a day in laser dentistry. That's it. Brings in a lot of new patients. The market, in terms of the patients, they don't want to go anywhere else. So then we started to expand our scope. He loves surgery, replacing implants, doing extractions, Invisalign, uh, sleep appliances, you name it all done here and rather than starting his own gig and coming up with a few million dollars to figure out how to put everything in there we we're, we're just developing a group of like-minded professionals so they have two options they can do it themselves buy a practice and take on the note and, and build it or they can find someone like-minded that's headed in that direction learn it and jump on the wagon so now are you the owner and their uh, employee associates or are you do partnerships so right now I'm the owner and he's an associate, but we're working into a partnership. And then from there, we're going to see, you know, we have two different ways we can go. We're probably going to vet them a little bit, you know, bring them in. And if we find, uh, you know, male or female who just wants to come in and not worry about ownership, but really takes pride in their dentistry and learns the technology, then we'll take that on. If someone wants to come in, then we will, and we still continue the growth there, we'll, we'll segment it off. But we're definitely coming up with a model that I think is the future of dentistry and you know we're not opposed to doing it in another location either. So l let's go back how much is this Soleo by Convergent and what would the uh, is this on a five year six year seven year what would the what would the monthly nut be and what how much so how much dentistry would they have to do? Right so um, you know it's always better to talk to the company about that but I'll give you kind of the round of price. it's about a hundred grand right? Yeah. And people generally finance it from five to seven years. So you're talking a couple thousand a month. But the time savings, okay, the best way to calculate the ROI is the new doctors who own it do somewhere between two and ten more procedures per day. So if the average procedure is 200 bucks, that's somewhere between 400 to $2,000 in revenue per day, not per month, Howard. Okay, but, but explain that. How, how would this, mach how would this uh, laser, Solea by Convergent, how would that um, help me do two to ten more procedures a day? 
Okay, so if you go back to those three buckets, right? The first bucket, take away anesthesia and blood. Do you think that would save you time throughout the day? Absolutely. So you're not waiting for patients to get numb. You're not waiting. You know, I, I, I don't remember the last time I used cord, right? And I do intraflap crown lengthenings or full crown lengthenings around teeth. So, um, so, so, that, so that's saving you time there. And then those procedures, those soft tissue procedures like a traumatic fibroma or a phrenectomy or whatnot, it, it makes the procedure not only so much faster, but the morbidity after is inconsequential. Um, so that's where the time saving comes, plus those new patients coming in. So are you doing one surface? So th this does hard tissue fillings. Uh, so you can do class one through six. It does not matter on the depth. Better than 90% without anesthesia. So um, I know pediatric dentists who just swear by these things because instead of having to go in there and give them a shot and then, and then that upsets them, then let that soak in seven, eight minutes, they just sit down and they say before... In the old school, after they gave me a shot, let us soak in. They're already done, and they skipped the shot. Have you have you heard uh, have you seen that in pediatric dentistry? Oh, uh, hundred percent. With kids, you know, I make a very bold statement with this. I try not to, you know, I try to avoid ignorance and hysteria most of the time. But with pediatrics, it should absolutely be the standard of care. It's it's a sin that it's not. You need Isolite, SpongeBob, and Celia. That's it. You need what? Isolite, SpongeBob. And Solea? Yes. For and kids? I hate Bob, but I say, but that's it. That's all you need. Forget for about kids. everything else. Take away the, if they can sit still for 120 seconds, I, do, I need those three things. If they can't sit still for 120 seconds, they're two and a half, three, then they need, they need to be sedated, right? So I'm not saying it's, it's, that's all you need forever, and we don't need pediatric dentists who sedate kids. That's not it. I'm saying for pediatric dentists, for general dentists in treating kids, 99 out of 100 kids you can be successful with with those three things. At one out of 100 kids, you'll find it's more of a sensory issue. They prefer to be numb. It's very, very unusual. Very, and you know right away because if you take the air water through, you can't even blow air on their teeth. You know, the baby boomers, you know, in my 30 years of doing this, the baby boomer was the big, you know, rabbit the snake was swallowing. That was where the dem demographics went, and I rode the revolution of them wanting to go from silver and gold fillings to tooth color and bleaching and bonding of veneers. I, I read that LVI cosmetic revolution with Ivoclare. But now those guys are retiring off in droves, 10,000 a day, and that's why the implants has taken off. But what was amazing is the baby boomers' children, the millennials, weren't too much into kids, but the millennials' children, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the, I mean, the Generation Xers didn't have as much, but the millennials had an echo boom of 4.3 million babies in 2007. And then Obamacare is saying that now all health insurance has to cover dental for kids. So the demographic boom and the, on the far left, uh, the young ones, pediatric dentistry is going to be a monster that th these new graduates are going to be eating for their whole career and the implants on the other end. But I, I want to go back. I want to ask you if I'm right or wrong on this because this is what I believe. I believe that sealants, um, they, they don't prevent decay, they delay decay because you're, you're putting it over pits and fissures filled with plaque and tar and cookie and junk and crunk. And all the literature I'm reading is, you know, half of them fail in a year and they're all failed in two years. But you don't see any dentist that will admit that. And that's all I see on the research. And then it's only like a $27 procedure. But if you take that laser and cleaned out those pits and fissures, you're in debt in 100% of the time. And then do an occlusal composite in five years, you don't even have a 5% failure rate. And if you did it with amalgam, they'd probably be there for 40 years. What, what do you think of buying a Saleo for pedo just to stop doing those crappy sealants and start doing preventative resin restoration occlusal composites? All right, you, so you touched on a huge nerve with me. You ready? Yeah. Because I, I, I agree with 99.9% .9 of what you just said, okay? But here's the thing. Sealants get a bad rap, not because of sealants, but because of poor diagnosis, all right? And why do we have poor diagnosis? Because we're not integrating the technology to make sure we have the appropriate diagnosis. So if you had a product like Diagnodent or Careview, where you could actually see what's in there and you could see the fluoride decay, right? What's fluoride decay? It gets in that pit and then it's a bomb underneath, right? I mean, I'm passionate about this stuff because it's, it's just blatant. It's sitting there right in us. It's like, it's 
right in the face and nobody's talking about it, right? So I'm talking about it right now. You cannot do a sealant over any stain at all, zero, 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 zero. And you better have some device that you can see to make sure that's not spreading. Because how many times do we get in there and the enamel is hard and then underneath it, it is just soft. And a product like CareView would show you that in 30 seconds. Okay. That's, that's number one about sealant. So but, but wait, see, explain what. Good? Absolutely. Do they need to be done on the appropriate teeth? Absolutely. But let's take a step to what you just said. And that was, well, if we just do a composite or an amalgam. Amalgam, I don't love amalgam just because it leads to a lot of fractures. But let's stick with the composite. I agree with you 100%, and that is just take out the pits and fissure. And what are you doing? You're really making the diagnosis. You're saying, well, there's nothing else under there. So now I can restore it, and I know I'm going to be okay. Because fluoride makes that outer layer strong, but it leaves those pit and fissures susceptible. But then you said, well, what about lasers? So let's go back to the history of Celea. Celea really was born 30 years ago by John Featherstone at UCSF Dental School, and it was 9.6 micron laser. 9.6 micron is about, Lycon laser was about the size of my table here, and it cost about 500 grand. So Nathan Monty, who's, who's the brain behind the whole thing, who works with 9.3 micron lasers, I don't have a water bottle here, putting etching numbers on water bottles with it, with galvos, which bounce the beam around like a laser light show, and etching that number on there said, you know, read the research and he said, you know what? That doesn't need to be 9.6. It can be 9.3, which is a ubiquitous laser, and you can get it for whatever, 30 grand, 40 grand, 50 grand, made in Connecticut, actually. And I can package that, and it's going to do the same thing because of the absorption curve. It goes back to physics. That's why I love physics. And it turns out that 9.2 to 9.8, I think, is the range, microns, is the range in which um, hydroxyapatite absorbs. So we can use the 9.3 micron laser to be absorbed just like 9.6. And John Featherstone showed that at low levels, that decarbonates hydroxyapatite. So if you take a tooth and you use a 9.6 or 9.3 micron laser at low levels and do that before you put brackets on, for instance, before ortho, it decarbonates hydroxyapatite. And the carbonate is how it decays. That provides the pathway of decalcification. And it makes that tooth 90% less likely to decay. Take it another step. He showed that if you actually melt the pits and fissures at 1,200 degrees Celsius of teeth, you will seal the teeth and prevent them from decaying. And then if you apply fluoride, it goes up another few percentage points. These are all studies that John Featherstone did at UCSF. They're available, they can read them, they can call Convergent Dental, and they'll get them for them. So I love what you're talking about. It's, 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 what it's saying is, let's not be satisfied with what we've been taught in dental school 20 years ago, but let's think about what we're seeing in dentistry today, and let's adapt how we treat based on empirically what we're finding. Sorry, I'm, I, like I said, I'm passionate about that. I love your passion. Um, you've covered a lot of things. My, my job is to try to uh, guess the questions that all these dentists commuting to work are wondering. You mentioned a couple things. You mentioned uh, Diagnodent and Carry View. Um, can you go over those? Okay, so those are two different lasers, okay? Diagnodent is a, a laser that uses fluorescent that you point in the pits and fissures, and then it beeps at you and gives you a number, okay? If that number is above 13, you should not be sealing the tooth. That's telling you that there are bacteria penetrating those pits and fissures. That product goes, I've had that product in the office, oh, I don't know. Who makes it? Maybe 10 years. Can you go find out? I actually, I actually forgot. What John, John my, um, my treatment coordinator, he's going to find out right now for us. Um, that's number one. CareView is a brand new product by Dexis. C-A-R-V-U? C-A-R-I-V-U. That by, is the by latest. By Dexis great. Dental? Yeah, I've been out the past year and a half. Howard, look at this product, man. It is awesome. There's other ones like Canary and whatnot. The reason I like this Dexis product is if you use Dexis Image, you can have your extra oral radiographs, intra oral radiographs, um, extra oral images, intra oral images, right on a screen. And the Dexis Care View images are with the intra oral. They look like a radiograph, but they're in the form of a picture. And patients can look at that, and it takes no explanation. They can see the decay. 
so you can educate your patients without a whole thing about well this is a laser and it transilluminates the tooth in the infrared region of the electromagnetic magnetic spectrum and this is decay and this is not they look at this and they can see it instantly and the one of the best things it does is it gives you the three-dimensionality of the decay so if you have a two-dimensional radiograph that shows you that there's the in, uh, incipient decay just getting past the DEJ, you can then take a care of you that's that tooth and you can look at the buccal lingual dimension. So you can see whether that decay is kind of the mesial lingual of 31 or it's the mesial buccal of 31 in the extent of which it is. It's a phenomenal project. Hold on a second. Who's Cavo. Oh, so diagonal is Cavo. Sorry about that. Oh, Cavo. Uh, the other okay, thing Cavo. The, uh, the one other thing that care of you does extremely well is it shows you decay around amalgams. How many times has a new patient come to your office and they say, oh, doc, I went to this other dentist, he said I have 10 cavities, and there's all these amalgams, and there's amalgams with this grayish hue, and you're like, I don't know whether that's just, you know, the, the, the silver leaching into the tooth, or really that is decay around it. Care of you will show you that decay. So it, may, it takes the subjectiveness out of diagnosis. And, and uh, care of you is made by Dexas Dental, of uh, Dexas uh, Digital X-rays? You got it. And, and then you, you, you flippantly uh, said there's another one called a Canary System. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a few that are pretty strong out right now. Canary's new. Di Diagnodent is kind of an older product. And how much do you think a Diagnodent is, ballpark? Uh, Diagnodent used to be about three grand. I don't know where it is now. Care View about 6800 the, the real good ones today are probably between five to $8,000. Um, so, so when you buy a 6800 Howard. Uh, next 2017, there will be a billable code for care of you. So when you buy um, a $6,800 care of you, explain to my homies what they're, what they're buying. What, what are they going to get? You're buying a unit that cannot make you confident in your diagnosis. So rather than being too aggressive or too passive, the new docs that I find, they tend to over-treat or under-treat. Okay? They want to they drill and fill everything and they want to get to yellow dentin or... They're, they're waiting too long on things. So when you're getting out, it helps you get to the middle faster. It's usually the middle of the road is where you want to be. Okay? That's number one. Number two is it lets you educate the patient much, much, much easier. Patients are used to looking at a monitor and seeing their radiographs at this point, seeing photos of their teeth. Now they get to see their care of you images and they see the decay. There's no convincing it's education so um i know what my homies are thinking they're thinking okay so i either numb up a patient let it soak in for five six seven eight minutes and then i drill an mod on a, a, let's say a first molar okay if i buy a laser i don't have the anesthesia i don't let it soak in how long does it take you to prep an mod uh, filling uh, with a laser as opposed to a uh, high-speed handpiece and a 557 bur. The reality is that it's just pretty much just as fast as a drill. In fact, you, you do use a handpiece because of the analgesic effect. Now, that whole analgesic effect and how that works, you know, that's the day course that I teach. But the reality is this. Let me give you a quick analogy. If I were to punch you in the arm once, you know, it would sting a bit. Twice, it would sting again. If I did it 100,000 times per second, you would develop kind of a numbness in the arm. You really wouldn't feel it, right? It's not, you're not numb. You have a decreased sensation. That's what the analgesic effect is about. It lasts about 10 minutes, and it falls off linearly. I'm doing the restorations at about the same speed. The hardest thing to learn is the fact that you're not in contact, and it's an end-cutting device. It's not a laterally cutting device. So you need loops, you need a headlight, and you need to be open-minded. That was a great analogy, <clears throat> punching in the arm, because my ex said that's my heart, so I... Totally know what you're talking. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, okay, you mentioned Isolite. You said Isolite, SpongeBob, and Solea. Uh, SpongeBob, a um, uh, 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 character for the kids. Um, talk about Isolite. Isolite's one of those products that I've known about probably my whole career. And for some reason, it took me 15 years to integrate it. And if somebody said, I don't feel this about too many things in life, but if they said to me, could you take those year back, years back with Isolite, I'd take them back. It saves your back, it's safer, you won't ever have to worry about catching somebody's floor of their mouth with the, with the burr that stopped, didn't stop rotating. 
and it, it, it reduces the humidity in the mouth to 40% as good as a rubber dam. So for a child, you spend a few minutes, you get them used to the isolate, you pop it in, and you're doing quadrant dentistry like that. What, what I like most about the isolate um, is I'm old, so the, the magnification is one thing, but I like the way it floods the arena with light. I mean I, I mean, I love the fact that now my assistant doesn't have to stand there, retract a ton of suction, and she can be entering the notes or setting up or, you know, she can be doing other stuff. I like that. She loves, Jan loves that. But I love the light. I mean, it just floods the area with light. Absolutely. So uh, my new ops, I just, you know, I've redesigned the ops. And, you know, I, I got a little away from just letting the, you know, the, the, manuf the, the distributors tell me how to set them up. I, you know, I've toured the country with, with Saleya and, um, I, I looked at a lot of different ways of doing dentistry. I don't even have lights in my rooms anymore. I told them, you know, eight, I bought 8X, some 8X stuff, and they, you know, they make this great new light, and they said, oh, you can't live without this light. I said, when you make a light that will move around with my eyes, I'll buy it. But I'm not going to spend the whole day moving that up light in the right position. Are Forget you it. wearing a headlamp? I'm wearing a headlamp. Now, does it uh, bother you since we're both bald that when you wear your headlamp all day, you have a, a red ring around your head? Or do no, you not have that? Night, night, can you grab those for me? I went with uh, cordless Nike lenses. I'll bring it. I'll show you. So you got you to try these. They're very, they're very light, four and a half magnification. Who makes I, them? I do some microscope uh, dentistry as well. Designs for vision. Designs for vision. How much, how much is the, the headlamp uh, from Designs for Vision? Not, not too bad, I don't think. It's uh, uh, maybe 800 bucks, I think, and it comes with two batteries that last about two hours. John's getting it for me. I'll show you. Okay. Again, I want to ask another question. This doesn't mean they're really coming from me, but I, you know, I'm on the message boards all day, every day. And uh, um, here so it is, Howard. Real quick. That's it. That's the whole shebang. You just press here, the light goes on. All right. Here's the battery. Wow. And listen, I don't get paid. Wow. So there's no headband. So I don't have that red, uh, yeah. red welt on my head. Where everybody's saying, "What the? What is that thing on your head?" Wow. Can't, wow. do laser, can't do laser dentistry without it. And why, why is that? Oh, you got to be able to see. If I take away your tactile sense, you, gotta, you, gotta, you need another sense to compensate with. It's all about the eyes. Okay. Can't see it. You can't laser. Now, this is kind of a long question ramp, but uh, throw it in there. So there's another uh, laser for uh, periodontal disease, uh, LANAP. Um, it's a very expensive system because you got to pay, like, uh, you got to pay for the training in order to buy the laser. It's like $135,000. Some people are saying that uh, any laser uh, will kill bugs down there and that you don't have to have a LANAP-specific laser. Um, what, 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 do you, what, do you, what do you think of LANAP in general, and do you think a laser is a laser is a laser when it goes to killing uh, periodontal disease? Um, yeah, so, th so this is, <laughs> it's funny. I was just talking about this this morning um, with the doctor. H here's the issue with this, okay? Lasers are phenomenal for periodontal disease, okay? And I told you it's all about chromophores. So different wavelengths are absorbed into the pocket differently. So if you look at Salea, for instance, it's absorbed into water. What has a lot of water in it? Bacteria. Basically blows up the bacteria. Lanap, it's a soft tissue laser, okay? 1064. Drawn into pigmented tissue, so it's in that, it's in that lining of the, tissue, of the tissue that it tends to ablate or cut. I like Lanap is a, it was kind of the front runner of treating periodontal disease. It's a heck of a lot better than uh, open flap pocket reduction therapy, and I like it. The thing that Lanap has is they have one study of like 15 participants that shows that 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 you know it, it reduced it reduced pockets. And and a lot of doctors are right. You can take a lot of different wavelengths and get in there and do a lot of good and do what we call laser bacterial reduction. You could do it with a diode for that instance. The key is to get a laser that does it all for you, right? It does cavity preparations, awesome soft tissue, uh, periodontal treatment, and that's what Salea does for you. It's so just could Salea go around an implant for periimplantitis? Absolutely. Do you do that yourself? We do. Right on. Um, so I'm trying to think of all the... Uh, um, CBCT, you went with the Gendex, you type, okay, uh, Valscope. That was another technology you mentioned. Right, so Valscope is, a, is another type of, uh, it's blue light fluorescence that um, 
dysplastic cells fluoresce differently than non-dysplastic cells. So my hygienists go in and every time a patient comes in, um, they use the valve scope just, to, just as another level of oral cancer screening. We do oral cancer screening at every visit. Now, you could say, listen, do you charge for that? Do you not charge for that? We value add for that. Um, if you're a PPO practice and you know what, your reimbursements are very low and you want to add that on, you can add it on. That's more of a philosophical question. The reality is, if you build it, they will come, do what you love, integrate the technology. But l l let's talk about that philosophy for just a second. I want to get, you seem like a, uh, no one could get you to say something you didn't want to believe in. You seem to be very passionate, very uh, outspoken with your views and eloquently speak. Why is it, do you think, that... Um, Delta, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, uh, Concordia, all these dental insurance companies uh, don't pay for oral cancer screening. Whereas if we flip the human upside down, it's the same technology, the same deal for a pap smear uh, to prevent uh, vaginal cancer, uterine cancer. Why, does, why do the MD insurance companies say, well, of course we're going to pay for a pap smear or anything to prevent cervical, vaginal, uterine cancer? And then you turn turn them upside down and say, well, what about cancer of the mouth? And they're like, oh, that's not covered. Uh, I mean, isn't that kind of weird? You, well, you want the PC it, answer or you, it, want the real, you want the real answer? I want the real answer because 50,000 Americans die each year from oral cancer, and that, that's our, our part of the body. Now, here's the deal with that. I have a very good patient, I can't name him, who uh, you know, is a, is a uh, you know, high level on, on one of those companies, right? I can't tell you which one. The reality is that dental... Is just the bug on the rear end of healthcare. That's all we are, right? We're, we're an add-on that they have to bring on when they negotiate these contracts. And all they want to do with dental is not lose money. That's it. That's how insurance companies are driven. They don't care about your health or my health or your patient's health. It has nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. Having said that, you know, don't blame the player. Blame the game. It's the game, baby. We play in it every day. So what do you do? You got to work within it. You got to charge what they reimburse, and then you got to you got to value add other things, and, and you got to make it so that it works within the confines of of of, of how you practice. So, you know, define what you want to do, deliver it, and 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 determine how you know what profit margin you want to be, and just do it, and let everything else wash its way out. Well said. That that was that was very well said because I do think that's the. Uh... The black eye in dentistry is that um, 50,000 Americans die each year from oral cancer. We don't do enough oral cancer screenings. And now with this HPV um, epidemic coming out where we had famous uh, people. Who was that famous actor and uh, did the press conference where he got oral cancer? Uh, Michael Douglas. And then um, it, who got oral cancer? And he said, yeah, it was from the HPV virus. Um, and then there was a very famous football player, which I don't think I should uh, say his name. I don't think he's going public with it, but a very famous guy with oral cancer from uh, um, Buffalo Bills. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, what was his name? He's been, uh, he's been going up. Kelly, he's been, going up, he's, he's been struggling with oral cancer for years and years and years. Yeah, but he wasn't a smoker. He wasn't a drinker. Him and Michael Douglas got this from HPV. I mean, yeah. and, 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 and I think what's the biggest black eye is I can't give an HPV vaccine. And, uh, and then the, the other thing that just grinds my nerves is that um, – Eight to thirty-eight thousand Americans die each year from the flu, and twenty to forty percent of the time, the person's last entry into the American healthcare system was at the dentist. And your hygienist and dentist can't give you a flu shot, but I can go to Walgreens or CVS, and a pharmacy tech with nine months of school can give a flu shot, but Howard's not allowed to. Uh, I, and I've I, got I, nine years of college. I agree with you. Listen, I'm looking for a different result. And my father turned to me and said, "David." When you realize that life isn't fair, I go for a different result. And my father turned to me and he said, David, when you realize that life isn't fair, it's going to be much easier for you. <laughs> right? right? Yeah. So, so, so I did. And, I, and I, I'm not saying just take it and that's the way it is. I think you've got to pick a few things that you're real passionate about and you've got to fight for them. Because if somebody doesn't fight for them, it's never going to get changed. But the reality is kind of the way I think I go about it in dentistry is – I am fighting in the sense that I never let those insurance companies dictate the way I practice because I'm able to leverage all, all aspects of dentistry to make sure I'm profitable enough to keep it going 
and the patients overall get, get, you know, get very, very good care. When we were going through technology, you also said real quick, CareView. Yep, so CareView is the one that carries detector, that DEXIS product. Oh, uh, that was CareView. Okay, I, I thought you said another one, CareView. Um, and then I want to um, hang on one last thing on that management software. Is the only management software you're using is just Henry Schein's Dentrix? Or do you use any other add-ons like Demand Force, Lighthouse, Solution Reach, in Dental Intel? Do you, or is it just Dentrix? Do you do all your management with just Dentrix? No, I do. I do use Demand Force, and that you're getting into a whole another subject, which is you know SEO, right? So um, the reality is, you could talk about all sorts of marketing, but your number one marketing resource is going to be the patient experience. So my practice initially was built on just other patients telling like-minded patients about us. Well, now, every third patient that comes through the door was referred by someone they don't know. How? By the Internet. And how have they gotten there on the Internet? Because of reviews that have, that have flooded there. So Demand Force is one that's very strong that we use, but they're all good. Again, Demand Force is a Shine product, so it integrates very well. Is Demand Force a Shine product? It is. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Really? But, Henry but, Schein, when, when did they buy Demand Force? Sesame is great. Um, see, Google constantly changes the bullseye. When Demand Force first came out, that uh, Google allowed their reviews as Google reviews. It's not the case anymore. But if you can get your patients to review you on Google so it shows up on your place page, and you better claim your place page, by the way, um, then you know, you're doing even better. So you just have to... You have to pay attention to those things. And by the way, you should be Googling yourself at least two to three times a week and checking out what your on online reputation is. If Google Review was the 400-pound gorilla, how many pounds would Yelp weigh? <laughs> Yelp has gotten stronger and stronger and stronger. I mean, people, it was just restaurants. Now people Yelp everything. And there's photos of my old office in Yelp that I didn't even know people were taking and putting on there through, you know, their, their phones and whatnot. I don't know, Howard. I don't know what that answer is. I just know it's pretty damn important. Okay, now now I want to now I want to uh, switch to begging from you. So on Dental Town, um, we have um, two hundred and fifteen thousand members, and we came out with the app a couple years ago, and a thousand dentists a month download the app. We're just past fifty thousand, but we put this online CE courses on there. We put up three hundred and fifty courses. They've been viewed six hundred thousand times from here to China, to Brazil. I'm begging you to put up a course on this stuff. <laughs> I mean, you lecture all over, all over, everywhere. Oh, you got on your, there's your Dental Town app. My God, I want to, I, I, there's so many courses I want. I, I, because the pedo is exploding, I'd love to have a hard tissue laser talking about pedo, talking about sealants. Um, I don't like the way, when, when, when kids come into my office, the sealants are always, chipped off, broken, failed. I, I think that's one of the weakest areas in dentistry. So to do an online C course talking about doing a sealant right, diagnosing, diagn all the, every, everything you've been talking about, you got to make me a course. All right. I, just because I like you, I'll do it. Is it a bald, is it a bald brother uh, a favor? <laughs> bald is beautiful, baby. It's lean. It's efficient. It's the future. Oh. Yeah, I know it. I, I love it. I, could, I, I When I lost my hair, people say, are you sad? I'm like, I lost my comb, my brush, my shampoo, my air conditioner, my blow dryer. I'm so damn glad. Four-year-old needed a haircut. I said, David, daddy will take care of it for you. No, daddy. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, would, I would love to get that course. And the other thing with millennials is that the younger kids, they like doing CE an hour of time while they're just laying on the couch. They, they tell me they just prop it up by their pillow and they just lay down in their bed and they just watch it out of the corner of their eye as opposed to our day where you had to wait for the convention, fly across the country, stay in a hotel. Now, now they just like, they just like watch it there. They don't have to take notes because they ever want to go back. They just go back to that course and play so it again. I think it happened. There's, there's, a, there's a group here of uh, one who runs Shine in Hartford. At, I call them the 85ers. They were born in 85. It seems to be anybody 85 or younger, that's the Google generation. Whenever they want to know anything, they Google it. And Googling something is a learned skill. If you and I went to try and Google something, it would take us longer than they do. it. They really can do it quickly. And that's what you're speaking to. You're speaking to this generation that, you know, the less they have to interact, the more comfortable they are. 
it's, it's, I, it's, 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 it's entirely different. It's changing everything. I was, uh, my uh, oldest two sisters went to the uh, Catholic nunnery straight out of high school. I'm 53. My oldest sister is probably 56 uh, years old. And it was amazing uh, sitting in their house while they, you know, they're always talking about, arguing about religion or other stuff. And, uh, and to have your oldest sisters and say, well, that's why God made Google. And they're Googling, they're Googling these religious uh, things or who said what or whatever. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a ubiquitous technology. But, dude, I, I'm your biggest fan. Uh, I love your passion. Oh, by the way, you said something. I think the most profound thing you said is, you know, you know so many people would say the customer is right. And then uh, people would say, well, no, because some customers uh, are mean to your staff and, and the customer is wrong. You're you're, you got to treat your staff as best so they can treat your customers best. And you said uh, the, the new patient experience that you like to do what you love and integrate technology for the staff experience. Because if you create a positive, perfect staff experience, then they will all create a patient, uh, a great patient experience. I, I, think, I think that's, uh, that, that, that's the most uh, profound thing you said to me today. Yeah, I would, I'll, you know, listen. I um, you know, I just went. I have basically a, a management team now. So I'm, I'm the CEO. Then I have a COO, and then I have a, a patient coordinator in the back. And listen, I thought, you know, I I deal with patients all the time. I'm great in interpersonal skills. I can manage the staff better than anybody. You know what? Wrong. Now, when my staff, some of my staff comes to me and says, "Can I talk to you about something?" I say, "Is it about patient's care?" No. Go talk to Jackie because the reality is. Jackie will process the information, come up with an answer that's just not off the cuff, and then handle the situation. And that's much better for the staff than me saying, are you kidding me? Dealing with, you, you want me to deal with this right now? I got, I got this going on in this room and that going on in that room, and it's just the wrong way to handle it. And then when you take that and, you, and they wanted to meet weekly, you know, my assistants wanted to meet weekly. I was like, are you kidding me? Meet weekly? The reality is they sit around, they hash things out, and they're coming up with not only the problems, but here's the key, the solutions. I don't want to hear the problems. I want to hear the solutions. Tell me what's wrong, and then tell me the right way to do it. And then I want you to come up with a system to get it done. And they do it themselves. And I'll give you one more thing. They, they do all the, all the interviewing. I do none of it. You interview them, they go through everything, and then I want to meet them, and they're part of the team. That's it. Well, dude, that was the, uh, I think that's the fastest hour uh, I've ever done on a podcast. Uh, you, uh, you blew my mind. David, seriously, I think you're amazing. Uh, I love everything you say and do. You're a hell of a guy. I'm begging that you create us an online C course. And the reason I'm asking is you, you said your associate listening to podcasts. They're, they're just different behaviors. They're the same information, but um, listening to podcasts is a multitasking behavior in a commuter on a treadmill. And online CE, they want credit for the AGD, the FAGD, and they do it on a desktop. It's amazing how all the podcasts are viewed on a smartphone in a car, and all the online CE is at a desktop, and it's the same damn dentist. I agree with you 100%. I want to show you something. Hold on. Before we go, I'll show you the, I'll show you the future right here. Johnny, yeah. come here. So when you buy all this technology and you have 10 rooms, you don't buy 10 of them, right? Right. Oh, and by the way, that's fixing all those ceilings. See the SS Pantarello there? That's what all it is. <laughs> Love it. All right, so this is this is a little tour here. Yeah. Yeah, that is a beautiful office. Okay, there you go. So you can trim the rooms down. You can decrease. Talk about spending sixty thousand dollars a cabinet entry in the room. Absolutely not. Nothing's in it. Nothing's on the chair. Soleil is on the right. Everything comes from the the rear. You see the CAD cam comes right off the back computer. Nice. And, and then we had the carts manufactured because we couldn't find one that we liked. Everything in it, and you just bring it in the room. You can do any dentistry you want in here. This room is 12 by 7 and a half, I think. So that's just how I see it, right or wrong. So what are you carrying around? Are you on an iPhone, or what, what, are, you, what are you on? Uh, this is uh, Apple uh, Air. I like Apple at home, but I was telling uh, your son that we got hit with the crypto virus twice. You know, that ransom virus, the hospital yeah. center? So we had to do... 
telling everybody about that because it's something this right here. It's a Meraki firewall. The firewalls are how how everybody how everybody's getting into this country. It's predominantly coming from um, uh, China, Russia, and North Korea. So we basically blocked all the traffic uh, outside the U.S. and then we whitelist who we need to whitelist. They come in. You click on something, you unzip the file, and then they encrypt your database. So the whole thing starts with when you open a zip file? Yeah, you can do it on, before you had to go to a website, and then it would pop up. And then now what happens is um, they can come through your email. So you need something like Office 365. Huh. There you uh, go. Here's the front. Man, that is just gorgeous. And you can do that off, uh, you, could, you, could, you could take a PPO practice. If you do it right, they'll come. You want to, well, we could do one on the economic. Do you want me to do something on the economics of dentistry? I'll do it as well. This is, this is the training facility for Salea. Near management. And then uh, ops down the way. I just thought I'd give you a tour. Yeah, I loved it. Thank you so much. And I look forward to your courses, as many as you want, as long as you, you can do a, a long one or you can break them up into segments. It doesn't matter. I'm just uh, – yeah, just... do, do you have my email? Just shoot me an email about, like, you know, kind of just kind of like topics that you, you want me to – and then we'll talk about it. I'll, I'll come up with something that, that works and then topics I'll talk about, and then, and then we'll go from there. All right. Well, I, uh, I, I, would, I would like to do – a great thing for dentistry. You really have. Like – I know it probably wasn't your vision originally, but it's it's morphed, and you obviously love it, and um, you know it's how it's how everybody finds you know. So I I forget what we were talking about. My oh crypto crypto virus. We were trying to find out about it, and my my graph and my my doc. He goes, oh, I was just on Dental Town. A lot of guys are bitching about it on Dental Town. That's all because of you. So. Well, thank you. Thank you, David, so much, and uh, I look for those courses. I, I, I'd like a course on everything you talked about today in more detail um, just because, um, like, say, they, uh, this is a multitasking behavior while they're driving, and if they sat down and did an online C course, you know, they'd see your slides or whatever. But um, whatever you want to do, uh, buddy, thank you so much for all you've done for me, for dentistry, for your patients, uh, and uh, thank you for spending an hour of your time with me today.